Hey guys, and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. In this box, we have a MIDI controller keyboard that Roland have very kindly lent me. I don't know what model it is, so in today's episode, we'll unbox it together and find out. Let's move this junk. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the 49 key A500 Pro. I'm not 100% sure though, but judging by the size of it, I don't think it's a 61. And the guy at Roland that gave me this packages it up so thoughtfully. He called this a Norwegian handle. And I don't know the origin of that phrase. So if you know, then let me know in the chat, but let's, um, maybe I can open this so that I can reuse this handle because I did carry it by hand from the Roland factory. Let me do this a bit gently. Got to be somewhat careful how we open this because I do want to use this packaging when I return it as well. There we go. World's slowest unboxing. I'm sorry, I will speed it up in post, so don't worry about that. There we go. Okay, so it is the A500 Pro MIDI keyboard controller, which is ace because I've been really wanting to check one of these out. Let's take a look at the features. Professional 49 key USB controller for Mac or PC. The feel of a Roland quality instrument. Awesome. It's going to be just like the D50. Easy connections with side panel ports. I like this actually when you put it on a desk to route all the inputs and outputs in from the side. It means you can get a bit more desk space, I feel. Everything at your fingertips. Has been ergonomically designed to put everything at your fingertips. Easily accessible, laid out, blah, blah, blah. Dynamic pads. It has dynamic pads. That's nice. Ready to rock in studio or on stage. Isn't that awesome? With Ableton Live light included. Well, I won't be using that because I've got my own license, but that's pretty cool that they bundle that these days. They used to have Cakewalk, but I don't think anybody really uses Cakewalk anymore. So getting Ableton Live light included is really good. I've done quite a few tracks with that myself, and we're going to do some tutorials using Live Light in the future. But yeah, there are loads of buttons here, aren't there? Buttons, knobs, sliders, and pads. There you go. So let's open this up and check it out. Before we do that, I find the specs, which some of you might be interested in. So we have A500 Pro, 49 velocity sensitive keys, inspiring feel and response for serious players. Oh no, that rules me out again. 49 assignable controls, knobs, sliders, buttons, transport, and more. 45, that's good. Eight dynamic pads for finger drumming and MIDI triggering. Sure grip pitch bend modulation stick, which is great for my shaky, sweaty hands. Expand playability with sustain and expression pedals. Puh, who uses those? USB bus powered, great. Durable Roland quality manufacturing and craftsmanship. Excellent. Works with any door on Mac or PC. Did I mention that the reason they lent me this is because I don't have a keyboard with aftertouch? So, sorry if I'm repeating myself. I can't remember what I did five minutes ago. USB cord, manuals, driver software. Put it in the screen, sorry. Uh, driver, software, USB cord, manuals, and the all important Live 9 with the serial number. That's awesome. Really, seriously, I'm not messing about. That's a great bit of software. You can do a lot with that, even with the light version. Ta-da! That was corny, sorry. Okay, this is pretty nice. Keyboard feels good, actually. I don't hate that at all. That's not bad. It's better than my A49. And pretty 
soft touch, you can hear that, it's not too clattery or clunky. I quite like that. That feels nice. Buttons feel good. Plastic a bit squidgy, as you unfortunately get on all controller keyboards of this price. But the buttons feel great. Knobs as well, the sliders. A bit plasticky, but I'm sure they get the job done. And there's your pads. And extremely light. When they gave me the box, I thought they were kidding me. I thought it was an empty box they were going to make me carry home because it is super, super light. This thing weighs nothing at all. Totally plastic, as you can see. These things always are, unfortunately. But it does feel pretty solid nonetheless. And it looks really slick. I like the look of it a lot. Very sober, restrained. Nice matte black surfaces. Yeah, really cool. Shall I give you a couple of close-ups? They feel pretty decent, the sliders. Now that they're broken in a little bit, they're really nice, actually. Very smooth. If you press down, they scrape a bit, but if you just move them like that, they're really super smooth. I like that a lot. Let's check out these knobs once more. So they're not endless rotaries. They do have a stop and start position. Maybe that's good to know for your application. I don't have a preference myself. This one here, the value knob is an endless rotary and clickable as well. And over here we have your transport controls. No, it's not transport controls, is it? I don't know what that is. These are your transport controls over here and a whole bunch of assignable buttons. They've been pretty generous on that. And I was playing around with this pitch stick off camera and it's really nice. They call it the shore grip or whatever. It's got a real nice feel and lots of movement in the modulation axis. So yeah, that does get a thumbs up from me. I'm impressed so far. I don't even know what these cost. Okay, let's hook it up to the computer. I think it would be fitting if I was to play the D50 VST with this thing. And I know that you probably want me to lay into this, oops, nice squeak, a little bit heavy and see how it performs. So let's do that now. I'm playing pretty hard here and my phone's ringing, but it feels solid. I, I really like it. The chassis of this is a lot better than my A49, which some of you may know that I didn't really like all that much. This thing is miles better. I'm playing that with quite a lot of force and I'm not seeing too much flex or bounce or anything. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a nice feeling action. Okay, over to the computer. Nice tight fit and power it on. Nothing. What am I doing wrong here? Ah, maybe that wasn't the power switch. Let's try again. There we go. So it's powered up and it's asking me to do things. Hmm. Oh, MIDI channel one. Yeah, that's okay. Let's see if we can get the default somehow and get out of this menu. Oh dear. What am I doing? Get me out of here. And my PC is complaining about the drivers. So we need to dig into that. I thought this would be class compliant. Maybe not. Or at least I thought my A49 drivers would work, but Okay, let me do that off camera and we'll be right back as soon as I've got this thing up and running with Reaper. Okay, let's check the preferences here and make sure that we have the right MIDI. I'm gonna change that to ACO as well. There we go. Don't need inputs right now. That should do it for the MIDI then, MIDI devices. We should see the A Pro, there we go. Let's enable that. Enable input. I don't know why there's two coming up there. We'll have to figure that out later. Let's apply these changes. So now, if we create a new track, add an instance of the D50, there it is. We need to make sure that we have 
MIDI input coming from our APRO1 on all channels. Don't see any MIDI activity. Let's enable this one. There we go. Now we can see a bit of MIDI activity as I play there. If I monitor the input now, I'll switch on the speakers, we should hear Fantasia in all its glory. Here we go. <laughs> it sounds real nice to me. can map this easily. Learn MIDI CC. Let's map it to one of the sliders. I'm going to pan back a bit so you can see what's going on. Okay, I'm sitting a bit awkwardly here, so don't expect any marvellous renditions today. Okay, so let's learn and we'll map it to this slider here, shall we? Did it do anything? Learn MIDI CC. <laughs> Doesn't seem to have worked. Let's try again. Try a different parameter. Maybe we have to change modes on the keyboard here. Let me investigate a little bit and we'll get right back in a second. So I have a hunch that we might fix the problem by enabling this second device, the A Pro 2. Perhaps that's the one that transmits the sliders and the knobs. I don't know if that's conventional. Okay, so now if I operate the sliders, you see I'm not seeing any MIDI activity here. When I adjust the sliders and the knobs are telling me that we didn't succeed. I just wasted half an hour, by the way, playing Fantasia. I was really enjoying it. Okay, let's try one more time. Now it's still not mapping, so we didn't solve the problem. Oh, unless we need to... Let's try that one. Oh, hmm, okay, this is a bit odd. So by enabling the input Pro 2, I can transmit, there you, go. you see as I move the controls, we're getting MIDI activity. As I move the sliders, the knobs and the controls, we get MIDI activity and I can control the joystick. But now the keyboard isn't working. I can only have one or the other. You can only choose one MIDI input here in Reaper. I can't, I can either have the, so you see what I mean? I can either have the A Pro 1, all channels. <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> modulation. It's pretty cool. We must have tweaked something as I was messing around with the knobs. So I can either have the keyboard working. All you guys that wanted to know how easy it is to edit the D50. Well, I did it without even knowing. By the way, you are not hearing a hi-fi quality sound from this plugin right now. You're picking up the sound from my speakers through my lav mic. So don't be disappointed about that. The problem here is probably me. I'm an idiot. I should have read the manual, of course. So let's have a look here. We can see here a description of the two MIDI inputs that we can see here. If I jump back to Reaper, you can see we have the, well, the three, A Pro MIDI in, A Pro 1, A Pro 2. So let's have a little look. So A Pro 1 receives data from A Pro sliders, knobs, or buttons that are assigned to port one. A Pro 2, same thing that are assigned to port two. And this one we don't need. This is data that comes into the A Pro's MIDI in connector, but we don't have anything connected to the A Pro MIDI in, so that's not relevant. The output destinations of the MIDI messages when you operate the A Pro sliders, knobs, and buttons can be specified separately for each controller. Hmm. So by default, they're going to a different MIDI port, which is odd. You'd expect by default everything will go to one, but no, they've split it up. So now we need to figure out how to route them. Okay, so I found a bit more information here as well about the two MIDI ports. The A Pro will be able to use two virtual MIDI ports, port one, port two. 
If you're using DAW software, which I am, and you're simply controlling the sound module for the part that's producing the sound, yeah, exactly, the APROS controllers can use the same MIDI output port as the keyboard. When APRO is in the default state, the APROS keyboard performance data will also be sent from port one. So you can assign the controllers to port one as well, which is what I want. I'm in the default state, but I'm not getting any of the front panel controls going to port one. So what am I doing wrong? See, this diagram shows the configuration that I'm getting when I don't want this. Port one, the keyboard is going to port one. Looks like in here, port two, all the knobs and sliders and stuff for controlling the door software. So how do I change to this mode? That's the question. Okay, okay. I think I may have figured it out. I haven't tested it yet, so we'll do it together. Okay, okay. I think I may have the yet, so we'll do it together. So now I have a pro one enabled, a pro, a pro two disabled. And I notice this enable input for control messages. I wonder if that's what it was. See, now both are enabled. Let me try this. Apply. Okay. Now I can. And here we go. I'm going to try the slider. 100 are going to a different MIDI channel or a different MIDI device on this one. And I can't figure out, I've read the manual from top to bottom. I can't figure out how to get it to send everything to the A Pro 1. It should be doing that by default. Okay, I'm a stubborn guy. Give me 20 more minutes to try and figure this out and then we will call it quits. Okay, we have a solution. I figured it out off camera. I'm not sure if it's a solution, but it's a workaround. Let's put it that way. So yeah, I still have the A500 transmitting the control panel to the virtual output two and the keys to the other one. And here's what we can do. In Reaper, there's a workaround. If I go to input MIDI, I mean, I can only choose one of these, but if I go to all MIDI inputs, all channels, then check this out. <laughs> yeah, we, we did it. Let's go to soundtrack. Why not? Something soothing after this somewhat stressful experience. I thought this would be a 20 minute job before dinner, but no, it wasn't. Right, so here we go, here's the soundtrack. Let's get things recording here as well so that we can have a, when I do the post-production, I will overdub. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Probably my worst ever demo. I just couldn't find the right chords, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. See you next time. Ta-da!